MF Global, the shares, fell 62% this week as the firm seeks a buyer. Now, the ratings agency Moody's downgraded the futures broker that, was run by, that is run by John Corzine. He is the former governor of New Jersey. Now, they downgraded the ratings of the company this week. We want to find out what put MF Global into jeopardy. My guests are Craig Pirong. He's a professor of finance at the University of Houston. And Matthew Lysing who's been covering this story for Bloomberg News. Gentlemen, good to have you with us. Matthew, first to you. What is MF Global? Who are they and what do they do? Uh, they're a futures brokerage, Pim. Uh, so if you're a hedge fund or institutional client, you want to trade futures on oil or wheat on an exchange around the world, you go to them, they have an exceed on the exchange, and they buy or sell your order for you. Um, when John Corzine came in about uh, a year and a half ago, he started expanding what they wanted to do to become a mid-sized investment bank and take on some more risk and get into the proprietary market. So that's where we are today with them. All right, Craig, come in on this topic of what's going on at MF Global. Uh, Matthew reporting today that they drew down their bank lines. What do they mean? What do you mean by that? Bank lines and how important is this? Well, it's very important because uh, firms like this depend on liquidity and they usually are able to fund themselves through the market. And the fact that they're not able to do that means that they have to draw down on credit lines from their banks. So it's, uh, uh, they're sort of an emergency backstop. They're, they're, it's like they're pulling the fire alarm. So, Matthew, who are their lenders? Uh, for these credit lines, we're talking about Bank of America, Citigroup, and J.P. Morgan. And they've disclosed this week that they had about $1.3 billion in these two uh, credit revolvers. And as we were, uh, as we've reported, those are, they have, they have tapped those. So they can't go back for more. That's the, a, a revolver. If you borrow and you repay, you can go back and, and borrow more. Uh, as far as we know, they have borrowed all of it at this point. Now, what about a sale of assets from the business? I mean, what would they sell, and have they hired anyone to help them sell some things? They have. They've hired Evercore Partners to advise them on this, uh, as we were told this week. And we believe that they're looking to sell their futures brokerage. Uh, that would obviously raise capital for them. And then it would free up um, about a billion dollars, probably, in regulatory capital that MF has to set aside its uh, customer accounts. So if it sells its futures business, all of a sudden it's got a billion dollars in cash that it can use that it is now tied up for regulatory reasons. Craig, one of the things that the rating agencies have been looking at is counterparty risk. What is counterparty risk and how does that work at a company like MF Global? Well, in this case, uh, MF Global is the source of counterparty risk. So a counterparty risk is you enter a deal with somebody and they don't pay you. Uh, they're your counterparty and it's uh, a risk that they don't pay you what they owe you. And essentially a lot of companies are worried that because of MF Global's financial circumstances that it's not going to be able to pay them and so they're not willing to do deals with the company anymore. And when you're a trading business and people aren't trading with you, that doesn't work too well. Matthew, what role has sovereign debt played in the story of MF Global? Well, they, um, they really, uh, disclosed in September that they had a position in uh, the debt of Italy and Portugal and Spain and some other countries to the tune of $6.3 billion. Uh, they have a market cap now of, of under $200 million. So as Where did they get the money to buy that sovereign debt? You say six, over $6 billion worth. Whose money was that? That's a good question. We don't, we don't know that for sure. Uh, it's being financed. The company has told us that it's financed to maturity, meaning that these bonds all mature by the end of next year. Uh, the risk of losing money for them now comes in if one of those countries defaults before then, or at maturity, if those bonds are below par, MF Global would take a loss on them. More than that, though, the, the market got the jitters because it's such a large position and they um, have, have such you know, the, the capital to, that they have to their position is not really uh, in a good ratio. They also reported some really bad earnings this week. They lost the most money they ever had in a quarter, $191 million. They've also lost money in the last nine out of 11 quarters. So it was a big confluence of things with the downgrade, uh, bad earnings, this new risk that they have on their books. Uh, it, just, it just started spiraling from there. Craig, this idea of spiraling, what does that mean for MF Global's future? 
Well, uh, these kind of companies frequently, when they run into this kind of trouble, they do spiral down and they do tend to fall down, and it's usually very hard for them to get up again um, because essentially they rely on funding from the market, and because of their shaky financial condition, that's very hard to come by. Uh, so usually what ends up happening is, is that they end up either failing or being taken over or having, uh, you know, essentially their crown jewels sold off to somebody else. Matthew, what about the role of John Corzon? He's the former governor of New Jersey and the former head of uh, Goldman Sachs. That's right. Uh, he said on a conference call this week uh, after their earnings that he was responsible uh, for these trades and taking responsibility for them and personally managing them. Uh, speaking about the the risk profile that they are uh, taking on, so it, it seems from my reporting that, that most people say that the, the character of the firm changed, and this was actually his plan and his strategy was to start increasing um, the risk that the that, that MF Global took on to expand into a more of a investment bank type operation than a, a broker who just puts buyers and sellers together, and so. Another way of saying that is that maybe he got a little ahead of himself on some of these, these bets and, and the market has had this reaction. All right. You keep us up to date on what's going on. I want to thank you very much. Thank you. Matthew Lysing uh, joining us from Bloomberg News and Craig Pirong, a professor of uh, finance at the University of Houston. Thank you very much.